Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation. My name is Robert Burrell, I'm a PhD student at Lancaster University and today I'm going to be talking about identifying and managing reversible capacity losses that can falsify cycle aging tests of lithium ion batteries. So cycling studies are essential tools for cycle life predictions of lithium ion batteries. They often involve changing of the charge and discharge current, depth of discharge and the voltage window. And the total capacity loss reported in these studies is uh, they're actually the sum of the irreversible and the reversible losses where for example reversible losses can come from things like lithium loss to the anode overhang regions during cycling. Now one of the key drawbacks of cycling studies is that they don't explicitly account for the time period spent in certain voltage and state of charge regions and this may enhance the contribution of reversible side reactions as a result. So the overall scheme that we're using uh, to cycle these cells looks something like this, where we initially have our different cycling procedures where we're using different voltage windows to observe the cells, and then we're entering the cells in relaxation periods where we store the cells at the fine state of charge. Now during these relaxation phases, we actually see a recovery in capacity, so we can then separate out our irreversible capacity losses from our reversible capacity losses, where in this particular study, we actually saw that these reversible losses poisoned our degradation rate and actually inverted our aging outcome. So in this study, we are cycling the cells with two different charging and three different discharging color voltages. And this gives us our six different test conditions in which we're cycling the cell. And the charging scheme that we're using is what's called constant current, constant voltage or CCCV charging. And it's a two phase charging scheme, where in the first phase, we apply a constant current, which causes our voltage to rise to our charging color voltage. At this point, we then hold our voltage in the constant voltage phase and allow our current to fall to a predetermined current cutoff value. However, during discharging, we're then just using constant current discharging. So what we're seeing uh, during cycling of these cells in these six different voltage windows looks something like this. So here we have our relative capacity over around 500 cycles. And interestingly, we, we see that we have around 1% greater capacity loss with a lower charging voltage. Now this is different to what we're expecting and to what's often reported in the literature. As normally you expect going to higher voltages during charging you and due to a greater rate of side reactions and therefore greater rate of capacity fade. However, in this case, uh, this did not happen. In addition to this observation, we also saw that once the gap between these two had established, it was largely maintained throughout cycling and did not seem to increase or decrease that much therefore leading us to believe that the loss mechanism behind this is likely technically capped. And so to dive a little bit deeper into the differences when we charge to 4.1 volts and 4.2 volts, let us to conduct like a tiny study and just to look at the charging times to these different charging voltages. So we see here at four different current rates, the time taken to charge to either voltage, um, and we have a breakdown of our constant current and our constant voltage phase. And we can instantly see that charging to 4.1 volts or so lower voltage actually takes longer than charging to 4.2 volts. And if we observe the sort of breakdown between the two different phases, we see that we have a significantly extended constant voltage phase at 4.1 volts, therefore leading us to believe that we have hindered transport processes occurring at 4.1 volts. And so now we've established that uh, the extended charging time comes from this CV phase. We then wanted to dive a little bit deeper into which specific region is contributing most to this extended CV phase. And that led us to develop the 2D timesheet map. And it's essentially a 2D histogram um, showing the time spent in different current and voltage regions. And it gives you an instant sort of visual diary of these regions in which the cell has spent most time in. And for this particular study, it gave us important information about the current relaxation profiles during the constant voltage phase which is the vertical lines that we can see here. Because during this phase, we, we maintain our voltage and then we allow our current to fall to our um, current cutoff value. If I expand the red square that we can see here, so at the very end of our CV phase, and plot them side by side, we can see that at 4.1 volts uh, for our CV phase, we're actually spending orders of magnitude increased time at the very end of our CV phase, so at the very low current region. And that this tool actually enabled us to identify these detrimental regions so that we know in future, if we're charging to 4.1 volts, not to have such a low current cutoff value. 
In addition to helping us identify these regions in this particular study, we also feel that this is a very useful tool for drive cycle analysis due to the fact that you can just instantly get this visual diary of the cell. And so moving forward, uh, we wanted to look at the transport of lithium vinyl graphite to help see what's going on there. So we have here a plot of the diffusion coefficient as a function of lithiation degree of our graphite anode. Now, because our anode's oversized compared to our cathode by around 14%, means that when our full cell is at 4.2 volts, the degree of lithiation lies somewhere around here. And at 4.1 volts, it's somewhere around here. And we can see now that we actually have up to an order of magnitude or more lower diffusion coefficient at 4.1 volts. And this is what's contributing to the sluggish lithium transport during the constant voltage phase at this voltage. Now we can also verify the reduced mobility of lithium ions within the graphite from the perspective of the phase transitions reflected in the anode equilibrium curve like we see here. Now in the literature it's been hypothesized that the flat regions of voltage capacity curves provide an insufficient driving force to rehomogenize the lithium distribution across the electrode in the event that it has become non-uniform. And when comparing that these two lit uh, lithiation degrees at 4.1 and 4.2 volts, we can see again that we actually have a shallower potential gradient at 4.1 volts and therefore we have a smaller spatial variation of electrochemical potential and thus a reduced driving force for lithium mobility. And so we now established that we have this sluggish lithium transport which uh, increases the length of our constant voltage phase um, and we are also losing more capacity as a result of 4.1 volts. So we wanted to then try and identify this capacity loss mechanism. And this led us to look at our relaxation periods or our storage periods. So here we initially stored our cell at 50% state of charge, and then we dropped it and stored the cell at 0% state of charge. Now storage at a low SOC will draw contributions from the anode overhang regions. As the concentration of lithium in the overhang regions is therefore likely higher than the active region, creating a concentration gradient which drives lithium diffusion into the active area which boosts the cyclable lithium content. And what we actually see during these storage periods is that we have up to 3% recovery in capacity during the low SOC storage for cells previously cycled uh, to 4.1 volts. And we can see that actually the aging trend is now reversed where these cells that previously showed greater capacity fade, so 4.1 volt cells, now have recovered more capacity during low SOC storage and actually now show less capacity fade overall. And we believe the, the loss mechanism for these cells during cycling is lithium loss to the anode overhang regions. Now, uh, because we have our extended CV phase during cycling, we have a higher time averaged SOC for these 4.1 volt cells. And this creates a stronger concentration gradient which drives more lithium into the overhang regions uh, during cycling, which therefore shows up as capacity fade. Now, when we um, so then stored the cells at a low SOC, it means that this lithium that was actually stored in our overhang regions, we recovered more of, and therefore it showed a greater boost in capacity during this low SOC storage. So to conclude this work then, uh, we saw that time spent in the CV phase depends on lithium transport and the respective state of charge of the uh, anode that a charge and cutoff voltage of 4.1 volts extended our CV phase and therefore resulted in an increased spillover of lithium into our overhang regions. We also saw that rest periods at a low SOC recovered most of the lithium from the overhang and actually allowed for a quantitative comparison. Um, we believe that time spent in the current voltage regions should be routinely considered in aging studies and that the 2D timesheet tool is the perfect tool for the job and can flag potential cost saving opportunities for the end user. And so moving forward, we would like to uh, observe the effect of routine and regular rest periods on cell lifetime, and also to compare the effect of three or more charging cutoff voltages on the reversible losses to the overhang regions. And from all this, to be able to optimize our usage strategies. So with that, I'd like to thank the Faraday Institution and Lancaster University and also the team that worked on this project. So Alana, Peter, Harry and Mike, and thank you for listening.